Let's go ahead and get this all stripped of its tape and see what this looks like underneath. So looking at this harness, really all we need is these wires here, which are the outputs of the radio. We need a front, left and right, and that's it. We're not using the rears. So what I wanna do is try to remove as much of this and this as necessary just to get it away from here so that we have the minimal amount of stuff behind the radio. So I really don't wanna cut into all these to remove this off of here. Um, at first I was gonna use these, but now that I've removed this and see that this actually plugs in, this might be a better idea. I can have my wiring from my DM come into this and not have to do any soldering behind the dash, so that's kind of really appealing. But I, I don't wanna cut into all this and then have to put tape or shrink wrap. I'm just gonna leave this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these in short. I'm just gonna put shrink wrap over the ends of these so that these don't touch. All right, so here's what we've ended up with. We have our T harness now, so this will plug into the radio. This will plug into the car. We have our speaker wires coming off. We can plug in. This will go back to the processor here. We'll take up a ton of room behind the dash. So now we can go ahead and pull the radio out, plug this in, and continue on with the install. And in the end, all we have to do is plug this one guy in. This is gonna make it real clean and easy. Let's go ahead and get the amplifier out. So one of the interesting things about this amplifier is it uses this plug here for the speaker input. So it has all these ends on here. So it doesn't matter if you put them in either direction. But what we like to do is we like to mark them what's one through five. That way we know which one is which. The power is also the same way. It's got this giant plug that plugs into this. We have all these removed right now. We also have the top off. We have our 608. We've gone ahead and removed those plugs. Everything's in this nice little pile right here. So now we need to just take these over to the car and figure out how to set these in there. The plan is to mount the amplifier like this with all the outputs going this way. And then the processor like this with all its outputs going this way. This way we have easy access to plug in to set it and also the gains and all the controls on this side of the amplifier are easy to get to as well. What we've come up with is this guy right here. This is a piece of quarter inch ABS. It's gonna sit like this and allow us to attach the amp here and also the processor on this side. To hold this in place, we've gone ahead and made another piece of ABS that's going to attach here and screw in and then just hold the thing in place. Now we've gone ahead and drilled two holes here so that we can add in some rivets. Now we can go ahead and attach the bracket. Now we want to drill some pilot holes here and here to hold this in place. So we can attach this to here, screw these in place. So now what we want to do is take all this over to the bench and we'll start running all our wires.
So we have our DM608 hooked up right now. Everything is done and wired. And what we're doing is pre-setting it up. So we have it hooked up to this power supply right here. And we're going in and checking the input. What we're feeding it with is this little Bluetooth amplifier right here, high level into it. Those of you guys that are wondering what these are, these are the AC LGDs. These are for loading down the Class D amplifier that's built into the radio. The reason why you need these is that with the Class D amplifiers, if they don't see a load from a speaker on those amplifiers, sometimes they create noise, they can become unstable. So when you add these into the mix, these are designed to help those Class D factory amplifiers stay as stable as possible so that you can get a nice clean signal or as clean as possible out of the factory radio into the processor. So for this, we have the dashboard view and what we're looking at is channel output one and two is gonna be for the mid bass. We've gone uh, ahead and set up the crossover for those. Three and four is gonna be for the tweeter. We've gone ahead and set up the crossover for those. Then five and six is gonna be for the subwoofer. We've set them to preset one and press and hold. Now the reason why we've gone ahead and powered it up on the bench is just so we can check to make sure that the configuration I wanted to do would work for it, which is run everything off of inputs one and two and have the mid-range on one and two, tweeters on three and four for this configuration. So we've gone ahead and saved it into the processor. To save it in the process, you just press and hold over the number and then it says, would you like to overwrite? You said yes. And now it's saved into there. Powering it up on the bench is also nice because it allows you to get in there and if you're unfamiliar with it, play with some buttons before you actually get it into the car and start hammering away on your speakers. It's a good idea. It's not gonna hurt anything this way. It's just sitting on a bench. You can use anything you want to power it up, you know, any any radio or anything like that. You just need someone to get a signal into it. Like I said, we use this cool little Bluetooth amplifier that allows us to do that. It's just streaming off our phone. We're not real worried about sound quality or anything like that. We just want to get a tone in it. You could use your phone with an eighth inch and some RCAs, plug them right into the RCA inputs on these. It's just so you can see the display moving up and down so you can get your configuration right. Now, granted, you can do all this once you get it into the car. So now what we're gonna do is unplug all this. We're gonna get it into the car, start running wires. All right, let's get going. <laughs> 